In this video, we will look at simplifying radicals, which have variables under the radical. Similar to numbers, even with the variables in the radicals, we will divide the exponent by the index. Often, when we do this, we'll end up with a remainder. And just as with the numbers, the remainders will remain in the radical. Let's take a look at some examples where we do just this with variables. In this problem, we're taking a fourth root. This means we will divide each exponent by 4. When we divide a to the 13th, the exponent by 4, 13 divided by 4, is 3. Three a's come out. However, when we divide, there still is a remainder of 1. This means 1a remains inside. Similarly, with the b to the 23rd, to decide how many b's come out, we do 23 divided by 4, which is 5. However, there is a remainder of 3. This means b cubed remains in the radical. Similarly, on c to the 10th, dividing that exponent by 4, we have c squared coming out with a remainder of 2 left behind. The d to the 3rd, when we divide that exponent by 4, we get 0 with a remainder of 3. This means none come out of the radical. We now have outside of the radical a cubed, b to the 5th, c squared, and inside the 4th root, we have an a, a b cubed, a c squared, and a d cubed. This radical has now been completely simplified to a cubed, b to the 5th, c squared, 4th root of a, b cubed, c squared. Let's take a look at another example where we see this worked out, where we also combine the variables with numbers. In this problem, we have 125, which we need to find the prime factorization of. 125 is divisible by 5, 25 times, which divisible by 5, 5 times, which divisible by 5 once. So another way to think of this problem is 5 to the 3rd power times x to the 4th, y, z to the 5th. Now we're ready to take the square root of what we can. Square root implies an index of 2, so we will divide each of the exponents by 2. On the 5 cubed, 3 divided by 2 tells us that 1 5 comes out, but there is a remainder of 1 left behind inside the radical. Similarly, on x to the 4th, we'll divide the exponent 4 by 2, telling us that 2 x's, or x squared, will come out of the radical. There is no remainder this time, and so no x's will remain inside the radical. There is no exponent to divide by the y by, so he will remain in the radical. z to the 5th, when we divide that by 2, we get z squared, with 1 z remaining inside the radical. We now have outside of the radical 5, x squared, z squared, and inside the square root of 5, y, and z for our final answer. With numbers or with variables, we find the prime factorizations and then divide each exponent by the index to decide how many come out front of the radical. Any remainders, or things we can't divide by the index, remain inside the radical.